Hey, welcome back to Dental Things. This is going to be a crash course into the beginning of learning our special ways of talking tooth with each other. So this is great for those of you that are getting into the field. Good on you. Dive in. But for the weirdos like myself that at one point was trying to just learn random things, this is what's on the menu today. In that case, keep on learning, weirdos. In today's concept, we're going to be going over covering how many teeth do we have and how do we count them, names of surfaces and what do they do, and the surfaces of teeth and their abbreviations. So in essence, the foundation about learning about dental language in general. Starting in the oral cavity, we divide the mouth into two sections, the top teeth, also called the maxillary arch, and then there's the bottom teeth, which is called the mandibular arch. So having those two halves in our mouth is cool, but from there we slice it down the middle, which is called our midline that divides our left from our right, and from there we get four different spaces that are called quadrants. And if you think about like quadrants thinking back to graphs and such, don't worry, you're not going to be having to do any math. Just as long as you can count to 32, you should be just fine. Within those four quadrants, we do have a set amount of teeth that grow there. Typically in each quadrant, it's going to be five for a kid and each quadrant for an adult is going to be eight. So if you go and equal that plus and minus and add the additional sign, throw the percentage over, that's 20 teeth for the kid's teeth, also known as primary teeth, and 32 teeth for the adults, also known as permanent teeth. Not too shabby, right? So let's talk a little bit more about those nuggets of tooth by starting with the youth. First off, those of you that want to deal with the children of the world and all the dental problems, thank you for your service. You think that you'd only need to count to 20, right? Well, that's where you're wrong. We're gonna go by labeling them instead of using numbers, but by the letters of the alphabet. So make sure that you know all of your ABCs, or at least up to T. It's funny that they would end on T for teeth when counting for kids. And that's only for the first six years of them living because then that's when we start heading in a different direction that we never wanted to revisit. Just like how in math class, when we started mixing numbers and letters together, we do that here with what's called mixed dentition. Permanent teeth got the short end of the stick though, since at some point they stopped making letters at 26, and remember we need to go to 32, and said screw it, just use the numbers then. And that's how we got stuck counting to 32 in general. Not too hard, right? At least that's what we over here in the America land go by, ABCs and 123s, known as the universal numbering system, where across the pond, it seems like in every direction, goes by quadrant numbering, also known as the FDI system. In the FDI system, it's really not too different, except that we instead just use the quadrants first, and then we count from front to back which tooth we are at. Such as an example, in the third quadrant, first tooth in the front, which is our central, it will be 3, 1. But if we go into the first molar of that third same quadrant, it would be 3, 6. The main difference, especially when saying it, is to separate the numbers. 1, 4 instead of 14. 3, 2 instead of 32. So that we don't get mixed up with our universals to our FDIs. Now let's get back to the universal stuff. Now don't go counting touching your tongue to tooth just yet, because there are a few factors on why you are sitting at a low 24 in your noggin at the moment. Such as teeth extracted to make room for braces, wisdom teeth not grown in yet, or only a few at the moment, or if you're like me and you're a freak case where we never grew any wisdom teeth at all. Any of these factors might make it difficult for you to go and count all these out and it match another person. Of these potential 52 teeth that we get in our life, they tend to fall into two regions with five teeth names for each tooth function. So due to symmetry, we will be listing these teeth off as it pertains to a quadrant, counting from front to back. When there are multiple teeth that have the same name, they are counted in firsts, seconds, and thirds. As we start from the midline, from the front, counting towards the back, these regions of the oral cavity are the anterior and the posterior, also known as the front and back teeth. Of the anterior teeth, there are three names for these teeth. These are the central incisors, the lateral incisors, and the canines, also known as cuspids, vampire teeth, or even if you're old enough, the cornerstone tooth. There are one of each per quadrant, so they go by their single tooth name. The central and the lateral have that second name called the incisor portion. The incisor teeth main function is to cleave and cut food, formed in a shovel-like manner to help with directing food to the main show around back. The canine tooth, sticking so far out, helps with the ripping and the tearing, using its shape to lock onto food, or if you're a vampire, using it to get your next victim or get some neck juice. Of the posterior teeth, there are two names for these, premolars and molars. Premolars, also known as bicuspids due to these teeth having two cusps on top, aided with chewing and a bit of ripping and tearing like the canine in front of it. 
They took our job! There are two per quadrant, so the first one that we meet going from front to back is called the first bicuspid, and then the second bicuspid. Write that down, write that down! Then there's the main game tooth. We really can't live comfortably without them. The molars. There are three molars per quadrant. So the closest to the front is the first, then this is the second in line, and lastly the third molar, also known as the wisdom tooth that we all fondly know. Molar's main business is to be hidden in the back. All the food can be optimally chewed, ground, and pulverized for processing so that they can do their masticating away from the other's viewing eyes. As you can see, every tooth has an important function that is not to be taken lightly. As for the baby teeth, they begin to emerge from the gums at about six months old, and it ends at about three-ish years old, give or take. Primary teeth on their own are important for a number of reasons. They help with speaking and pronunciation, and they help guide the permanent teeth into their correct position as they come into place. Now we go and talk about our surfaces of the teeth. Now, while teeth may have different names and functions like we mentioned before, what is consistent about every tooth is the amount of surfaces on the tooth that we have. There are five surfaces per tooth. The names overall are the same, but with a few changes to the name depending on where the tooth is located in the front or in the back. These surfaces of use and name are the occlusal or the incisal edge. Then there's the smooth surfaces, our buccal slash facial surfaces, and including that our linguals. And then there's the in-betweeners, the mesial and the distal. To help with visualization, we typically use a charting system to keep track of which surface might need a restoration on it or have a condition that we might need to fix. These charts are called the geometric chart and the anatomical chart. Today we're sticking with geometric for the shapes, but you can transfer the same material to any standard charting system. Now, when dealing with surfaces, the most functional surface is that which slices, bites, and chews, which is our occlusal, our O surface, and our incisal area, our I surface. They occupy our center area of our charting circle, no matter if it's the top teeth or the bottom teeth. The two names share the surface depending on if you're in the front teeth or in the back teeth. They have different functions though. In the anterior region, remember, that's the front teeth, these knife-like edges help with cleaving, slicing food to make pieces smaller for the rear to shift into gear. In the posterior region, remember, that's the back teeth, our chompers have this wide, flattish area with these mountain-like spikes, also known as cusps, that will pulverize food or whatever you may need to throw back there. So with that, our centrals, laterals, and canines take on that incisal name. And our premolars and molars take on the occlusal name. The actions are to incise, to cut, or to occlude, to bite. Going on to another surface that has a name change is the buccal surface, abbreviated as B, and facial surface, abbreviated as F. They occupy the outer regions of our charting circle. And due to the chart flipping when going top to bottom, uh, there will be a slight change. As long as you remember the imaginary line between the arches, you should be able to make the call. Hey, quick callback. Do you remember what we called the top arch and the bottom arch? Hopefully you got it right, and that's the maxillary, top, or mandibular, bottom. Don't worry, it takes a little time to get used to our language as we keep on using it. You can say the buckle, or B, is to the back. And then facials, F, to the front. B for back, buckle, F for front, facials. These are the areas of the tooth that touches your cheek for the back teeth, or that's towards your lips or face, the facial portion. Here's an additional thing, although not used specifically in charting, it's referred to as the labial surface meaning towards the lips if you are used to describe the position of a tooth. Slip to the opposite side of that smooth surface and we reach the first surface that has the name throughout everywhere, the lingual side, also abbreviated as L. Lingual is to the tongue side. They occupy our inner regions of the charting circle. And due to the chart flipping when going from top to bottom, there will be a slight change. As long as you remember that there's an imaginary tongue line, you can link them together, just as we did before. Another bit of information, although not used in charting, it is referred to as the palatal surface, meaning towards the palate if used to describe the position of a tooth. And now to our last pieces that comes as an opposite pair. This is our mesial and our distal area. Can't have one without the other. Like I mentioned about flossing, these two on a charting circle occupy the left and the right, the in-betweens or what we call the interproximal of the teeth. 
interproximal, meaning in between surfaces. To tell them apart, the main point is to locate the midline of the mouth again. And when looking at the tooth as a whole, there's the side that faces towards the midline, that's the mesial, and then there's a the side that faces away from the midline, that's the distal. So when there's teeth butt to gut next to each other, the mesial and distal are always next door neighbors. Also, as it goes, neighbors share things between them. A tooth decay that lies on a tooth's mesial may hand the germ over to the distal to enjoy as well. You can also take this neat way of learning surfaces. Like many lessons in life, we throw up our fists. Curl your hand into a fist with the thumbs facing towards you. Can you spot that letter? That's a D right there. D for distal, the area that points away from the front, our midline. On the opposite side, we see another letter hiding. Can you spot it? Our M for mesial, that points towards the front, our midline. The inside of our flappy fingertips imitate the flappy tongue side of our lingual, and the back of our hand for buckles or facials. And the striking side of our fist for mashing and pulverizing, that's the occlusal, or if you open your palm into a knife hand, there's your incisal as it acts to try to cut. So the next time you're taking your fist in the ring, you better go ahead and teach that opponent about tooth surfaces the right way. So that's it for our lesson today, learning about teeth, surfaces, and all the random stuff that I got to go over today. Hope to see you in another video, maybe about tooth charting or anything else that's in the dental field. And thank you for joining us here on Dental Things. Take it easy.